As a family physician for over 25 years, Dr. Templeman, how is it that you've studied and recommended alternative botanicals, often over prescription drugs? Well, uh, certainly prescription drugs have their place, no question. The interesting fact is that most prescription drugs, almost half of them, are modeled upon uh, elements that people have found in nature to begin with. They've been synthesized, but they are imitations of some of the things that have been found in nature. And they have been changed in such a way that most of them have side effects, where it would be really nice if they didn't have side effects. So when you can find something that comes into play as a nutritional intervention, in other words, what people take in as food, if you can find that nutritional intervention, then you've got something that just has a safety profile and maybe, in my opinion, just as efficacious. And so I recommend things that are supplements as well as using drugs to help people when they've got problems. Thank you. And as a, a member of the generation of baby boomers, right. as, as mm -hmm. we come of age, the huge market is the anti-aging segment of the population. And there's a new product on, on, on the market called Ageless. Could you address this product and how it can impact the quality of our lives as we age? Well, as a baby boomer, I'm using it. And of course, I would look at virtually everything that's out there in the market before I would make a choice, and I'd suggest that to consumers. But when I look at a product, I want something that isn't just crammed full of buzzwords. In other words, not, not designed by marketers who are simply trying to put things there that people would recognize as a buzzword. There's a product out there, for example, with 38 different ingredients. Well, how much can you put in that's useful of 38 different ingredients into a single product that wouldn't be the size of a dog bone? So it's nice to be able to see a selection of products that really do have ingredients with history behind them, but are not overloaded in terms of what's being put out there. There are other products that uh, really have too few elements in it to really make an impact because aging is a process where the body becomes gradually less efficient at the things that it has been doing. And that aging process usually starts, in other words, we peak and start on the downslope in our early 30s. So it's really important to take things into your body that perhaps your body cannot use with the same kind of efficacy as it has before and be able to give a supply to it that allows it to function at a higher level. And the, the things that are in this product are all tried and true. The mangosteen fruit is perhaps the most versatile of all of the supplements that are on the market. I mean, it has tremendous information on it. Uh, just looking at the, the period from 2008 to 2014, in those five years, uh, the amount of writing that has taken place in the scientific community in the form of studies has quadrupled from what it was before. So there's a lot of interest and the mangosteen is something that has a number of families of the kinds of the polyphenols that the plants have produced to protect themselves. It's got lots of those different elements in it and so it's tremendously important. There then is also something called shilajit or silajit or there are many different ways of pronouncing it. And this is an element that has been used in uh, traditional medicine for centuries within the Ayurvedic uh, formulation, which is the predominant sort of model in the Indian subcontinent. It's been around for hundreds of years. Uh, we have Aristotle referring to it. And it's something that the Russian people have been using because it is found in the Ural Mountains as well as in the Himalayas. And it's actually an extraction uh, that's something that oozes out of the ground. Now it has to be refined because it's got some things in there that wouldn't be good if you didn't refine it. But it has a tremendous supply of minerals. It has things that the body can use as electrolytic basis, the basis of, growing, of getting what they require in terms of minerals into the body. Uh, and that's important. There's also lychee, which is something that in the Chinese traditional medicine has had centuries of important information and the Japanese have improved that because they've 
shorten the molecular size so that we're not talking about real long polymers that really can't get across the gut. But they've shortened it down to trimers, dimers, and monomers and have increased the ability of the body to be able to absorb that and get the multiple benefits that come from that. There is uh, L-leucine which is the amino acid, which is the rate limiting factor in the actual growth of muscle. There's tribulus terrestris, which is an adaptogenic herb that again has been used for years and years. And people who are active in the gym have been using that for the benefits that they have seen in terms of muscle strength and endurance. We have aloe vera. And what do you need to say about aloe vera? Around for about 60 years now, very common household word. People recognize its beneficial effects for skin, for the GI tract. There's grape skin and grape seed extract. And it's not hard to be able to see how the polyphenols, the pigments from the grapes, uh, really do have some application. And there's quite a bit of preclinical evidence out there that would allow it to be important when you're talking about the gradual decline in efficacy of the circulatory system as being a major factor of aging. And finally, there's beetroot in there. And beetroot happens to be the best source of something which is at the basis of nitric oxide formulation. It, is, uh, uh, it contains the elements that the body breaks down to give us the most important chemical messenger, nitric oxide, uh, that the body actually uses. So everything that's important is in there. Things that are superfluous are not. And I think the proof is in the pudding. Uh, people have been using it now for many months. I've used it myself. I've seen differences in uh, the kind of stories that I hear from people and in the kind of laboratory tests that I've seen. And so therefore, I think that it's a, a tremendous product that anyone who's interested in slowing down the process of aging, because we can't stop it, but in managing their aging, why would they not choose this? And how do we take this product ageless? Oh, ageless comes in a little package like this. You would take uh, uh, some container. In this particular case, I've got something else in this container that I use to sip. But you simply tear it off, put it in, and agitate it, and then drink it. And it can be taken at any time of the day. Most people take it in the evening because some of the ingredients, for one of them, for example, that I didn't mention, which is GABA, is a neurotransmitter that actually helps people calm down. So taking it in the evening before sleep really makes all the sense in the world. And there's some influence of GABA on the secretion of uh, growth hormone in, in some of the studies that, that have been shown in animals, at least. Uh, to influence in a favorable way the amount of growth hormone that's secreted during your sleep. Thank you so much, Dr. Templeman, for sharing Ageless with us because we now know for sure that how we age is definitely a choice. Well, it's, it's my choice amongst the many things that are out there. It's my choice and something I recommend without reservation.